Pterodactyl here, and we also have another channel. It's called Terrell Fixes All Skits. Check it out. It's all the skits, all the past skits from over 500 videos that we have out there. So we're putting new ones up weekly. So go to that new channel, Terrell Fixes All Skits, and there's your dinner. Woo! Check out Terrell Fixes All Skits. Got all the funny parts of the videos. Check it out. Subscribe today. Pterodactyl here. Today's video is going to be on this here two cycle twin cylinder Maytag engine. This is a washing machine engine. Probably from the 1930s. And we're going to see if we can get it running. But before we start the video, I need for you, you grass rats, to hit the subscribe button. That's right. Hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. And also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, so we got this twin cylinder washing machine engine. And it's got no spark. So, I'm going to show you that it's got no spark. Should jump that. Another thing I can do is put my actual spark tester in there. And if you're doing one of these, you need to leave the other one hooked up. You don't want to disconnect both of them. We're going to pop the flywheel and hopefully we just got to clean the points and get spark out. So I'll remove the nut and uh, we'll stick it on there flush. I'll get this pulley off. We'll tap on the end of it and pop this flywheel off. I removed the nut and this pulley and you could tell that you could see here that the threads are starting to come off. So I got a brass bar. So I'm going to tap on the end of it. Tells you in the manual to put the nut on there flush hit the end of it with a piece of wood. But I'm gonna use this brass bar. Come on. Let me get my brass, I got a brass hammer. I got a rawhide hammer, I'm gonna try that. I don't think I'm shocking it enough. I don't want to mess this up either. Yeah, it's kind of kind of wrecking what little threads we got left. We get a thread chaser. All right, I got a couple wooden wedges on there. This thing is stubborn. There we go. Okay. Flip it up. Take a look here. I'll pull it 
pull the plugs out. Coil's got some cracks and stuff in it. Let me get my points filed. We'll try filing them points and see if we can get any spark out of it. So I have absolutely no parts for this thing. Points look pretty, pretty wasted. They're really they're really pitted bad. I don't know if the camera can catch it, but I got them pretty, pretty cleaned up. And it says to set them at 20 thousandths. So they're a little, they're a little sloppy. Yeah, it seems to be right there. Seems to be right at 20. All right, let's put the uh, let's put the flywheel on and see if we got spark now. I don't have to tighten it down. my spark tester. So I took the plugs out and I grounded this coil wire to the cylinder head, which is what they tell you to do in the book. And now I got our spark tester hooked up. So let's see if we got spark now. Woo! Woo -woo -woo! We got spark. All right, let me ground this one. And check this one on this side. We ground it to this fuel tank bolt. Yeah, we got good spark. So I just need some points or a point filing. Okay, so it's got this little pipe plug up here, which goes to the crankcase and it's for the bear you know so you can get to the bearings and stuff so I'm going to take some some two cycle oil 
And I'm going to force them down in there before we try to start it with some gas. I'm not going to pour a lot in there. Just want to make sure we got enough lubricant in there. Because who knows when the last time this thing ran. I don't know anything about these. Never worked on one. Heard about them, seen them. I blew the fuel tank out. Some dust and stuff came out of there. It says this gap the points at 37 thousands. Now these are J8s. I hope these aren't fouled. There's 35. That's about 37 right there. I could probably get away with J8s if I have to. We'll see if it'll fire on these. If not, I'll try putting a new set of plugs in there. see what happens. We'll see if we get lucky. It's our dinosaur cocktail. I'll make sure I got enough in it. So, right here, that's how you do the fuel. So, we did get a little book with it, and it didn't give you, a, they give you starting procedures on some of these other Maytags, but on this one, it said to turn it so that start is at the top. So that's what we'll do. And we'll see what happens. We'll see if it'll if it'll lick off. We'll put it on the ground. Like we're washing. Like we're gonna wash some clothes. You might want to get over there. Close the water. I'll try opening this thing a little more. It's not starting. wonder if, if this might be just like a little maybe a primer hole maybe if I try pouring a little two cycle mix down there let's take a look it feels like it's got compression see if the plugs are getting wet no
Let me try shooting a little mix down there. Let me find one of my syringes. Get a container to put some dinosaur cocktail in. That's all the way in. Well, that seemed to work. It lives to wash clothes another day. Maytag. I bet you. When Maytag had these back in the day, that, that repairman wasn't sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. He was probably out working on these things all the time. not picking up fuel and I did notice on the bottom let me see are these getting warm they both getting warm it hasn't ran long enough I'm gonna put two new plugs in it but when I mounted it to this board I had to bore a hole in the bottom for this plug and I believe this has something to do with the carburation. And what do we got here on the side? Be sure to lead the exhaust or lead Bonk. the exhaust gases outdoors. Allow no cloth or flammable materials to come in contact with hot exhaust hose or engine. Stop engine when filling the fuel tank. All right, that's just kind of common sense stuff. The fuel tank is leaking that gasket on there. So let me get something and take this bolt out of the bottom here. That may have something to do with the jetting of it. And I'll throw a, a new set of plugs in it and then we'll go from there. Let me find a socket. Looks like it's half inch, nine sixteenths, half inch. Looks like a bunch of crap up in there. All right, so let's do this. Let me put this back in. I'm gonna pull the four bolts that hold the engine to the to the crankcase. Let's see what happens when I tilt it down. Does gas come out? Getting any gas coming out? No. Let me pull these four bolts here, 
five volt. And we'll lift this off of this fuel tank so we can see how this carburation setup works. I thought I had a ratchet wrench over here. Here it is. Alright, let's pick this up off of here carefully. So this is our pickup tube. This is what's going to pick up the fuel. And this is our fuel tank. And this is where I took that pipe plug out. Somewhere around here. I'm going to have to drain this fuel out. And there's our main jet. It's way up inside here. And it's probably plugged. So I'm going to have to rod that out. Clean off. Look at all this. You could. That's probably just old two cycle oil because it's blue, kind of greenish blue. All right, let me let me empty this out. Let me move this. I don't want it to fall or break. I get a container and I'll dump that gas out of there. Look at all this crud. So I'll get a scotch bright. I'm gonna get a scraper. We get a gasket scraper. no gasket and I'll clean out that pickup tool tube and it should run after this it's just a siphon type carburetor and then when you're opening this this thing here all you're doing is giving it air let me take this off See, it's just pulling air through there. I'll try to clean that out. Right, let me clean up this pickup tube. I got a scotch right here. Check this thing for cracks. It's in there. Pretty solid. Find that dental tool that I use. This one that's got that flat, those flat edges on there. That works good for scraping stuff. It'll scrape that tartar off your teeth. It'll scrape the crap off of here. Top. And then I'll get my uh, 
one of my wires. We'll run a wire through there. So I thought there was a little hole in there, but there's not. It appears that it's got a little like check valve. So I sprayed some cleaner in there and I could hear it going through, so it's going through the hole. So now I got some gasket paper. I got a roll of this. And I'm gonna make a gasket for this gas tank. And I'll show you how I do that. Some of you know, probably already know how I'm gonna do it. First thing I wanna do is figure out where this where this is gonna be. Kind of push on it to mark it. So I know it's gonna be about there. Keep backing up. Back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. And I got my hollow punch set that I got in mid-Ohio. And I will punch a hole in there. We'll get a block of wood. Now I'm gonna get my little body hammer. Again, you gotta back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. Sorry about that, Mr. Cameraman. And then I'll just tap on the edge here and it'll cut the gasket for us. That sharp edge. So I, I use this end of the hammer to put the holes in it. Now I put the bolts in there to hold the gasket in place for me. So I know this last hole is about here. That's what's good about using a body hammer. To get that last, it's where the chain guard's in the way. That's the hole for the chain guard, or the kick chain guard, kick starter. Mm -hmm. So now that'll hold it in place for me. And I put nuts on the other end. Now I can go around. and trim up the rest of the gasket. Cut that excess off. Now I don't have 
have to do the inside because there's nothing there. So I'm just going to leave this gasket that whole, you know, that whole thing. I'm not going to cut out the inside. We don't need to. Now this is probably going to be a little trickier because the flywheel's on and all this. So I'll just I'll just take an X-Acto knife and just cut cut along there. We'll just follow that along. Firm it up a little. And I can do the same over here. Whoop. There we go. Now we got a gasket. Now let's put it back together. See if it'll pick up fuel now. Put those new plugs in. Now in case you were wondering, well Tal, Tal, why didn't you just take the gasket paper and just do it on the oil pan or the or the gas tank pan instead of doing it on there? Because chances are that hole ain't gonna line up if I did it that way. Plus, I would have to thread these screws in to hold the gasket in place while I hammered around it. A lot quicker, easier, and faster to do it the way I did it. And we kind of dust it off. Kind of get it to lay flat. on there. Cast iron so it's pretty pretty heavy. I don't want to drop it. There we go. All right. Now I can put the bolts back in. So these threads in here are stripped out and they're 1024 and it's kind of thin. And this is made out of steel. So I got a couple of options. I could get a 1024 nut and try to braise it to the back side of there, which is going to be kind of difficult to get down in there and do that. Or I can use my nut rivet or nut cert tool that I got here. Hand nut riveter or nut cert. And I do have a 1024. And I've got a 1024 nut cert. So what you do is, in case you don't know about this, is I gotta find out what size hole to drill in there. And it happens to be 932. So I got me a 932 drill bit. I'll drill this out to 932. Nutsert fits in there. So I put this in the nutsert tool. I gotta push down this little collar. Thread that in until it stops. Thread this on. Plus, this will give us a lot more threads. Thread that on in there. Now, since this is aluminum, I got to be kind of careful because I could rip the threads out. So, that's as far as I need to go. All right. Now we got plenty of threads in there. Nope. Get them chips out of there. John and Ponch.
There we go. Good as new. No brazing required. Now they tell you in the book, because this is just pipe threads on here. It's like half inch pipe threads. That's like a pipe nut to adjust this thing. So when you have it running and you have it on run, this should be right up and down. So as you're tuning it, say it's over here, then you loosen that nut and you turn this so it's up and then you tighten the nut down. So I may have to do that to adjust it, but now it'll tighten up again. So we can fill it back up with gas. Dinosaur mix. Oh, forgot to do one thing. <laughs> Knucklehead. Forgot to cut the opening for the gas to go in. Ah. It's all right. I'll take it back apart. It'll only take a minute. I'll just cut this out. I ain't taking this thing back apart. Just cut it with this exacto knife. And I'll get that little, grab that little piece of gasket. Stab it with something. There we go. All right, now I can fill it with gas. No sense in wasting that good dinosaur syrup. Dinosaur cocktail. Oakley Dokley. All right, let's see what happens now. You like my hat? This hat would look good on you, grass rat. Get it in our online store. Get yours today. All right, let's start this thing. pretty long.
cylinder one. I seen it, it said it runs at 1100 RPM. So we're gonna check it with the tachometer and see what this one's running at. Well, here in the back, look, here's the twin cylinder. It was made between 1937 all the way up to 1952. It's hard to believe that in 1952, they still had gas-powered washing machines. That's, that's amazing. So let's, let's check the RPM. It's been running a good five minutes while we look through that book. Let me put it here. So it's running at 1,600 RPM. You turn this in a little bit.